there are three types of people who will click on this video. Those who don't know what this is, but think it looks cool, or they're just clicking on it because they like my content. Thank you for being here. There are those who know exactly what this is, and then there are those who like the Cassatria and are still confused by this thing's existence. This is the Metal Build Club 1100 scale Cassatria NZ666. This comes completed and only requires minor assembly. This one is done in the full frontal color scheme. Not the Red Comet, full frontal. Technically, they could be the same people, but God only knows. Sometimes Gundam even loses me with the lore. This is a gift from MCJ. He sent it to my PO box on my main channel. For those of you who don't know, this is actually a secondary channel for me. Well, one of four channels. I do a lot of things in my time to keep busy. They keep the depression at bay. Anyway, this thing is beautiful, actually. For anyone that's a fan of the Cassatria but laments the fact that Bandai has yet to make one available to us all at a 1100 scale, master grade preferably, or perfect grade, but let's face it, Bandai never put a perfect grade version of this because it probably costs too much R&D knowing them, and they'd be too afraid no one would buy it. They'd sit there and go, oh no, uh, it's not a unicorn, it'll never sell. And since the Cassatria only comes in two-ish forms in Gundam Unicorn, there's no way for Bandai to really milk the design like they do with most other kits they put out, which is most likely why you'll never see a Cassatria. You'll see a Sinanju perfect grade before Cassatria. That's a sad truth. The only other options in town for a full-size Cassatria, by the way, this has uh, switchable hands. I hate the mechanic here. I hate these type of switchable hands because you got to get them right in the peg sometimes the peg doesn't want to go with the damn thing i actually had to drill this hand specifically so it would actually fit believe me as cool as this thing is it's got problems it comes with three or four sets of hands by the way if you're interested which is a good thing that's a lot of dynamic posing because this thing is meant to be in a glass case displayed as i was saying this is kind of the only game in town if you really really want a cassatria especially anything above 1144 scale from Bandai. This is it. You don't have to get the red version. There's now red and green. It's the Well, actually, there's one more. There's the Steel Legends Cassatria, which also looks very cool. And it's got way bigger, I don't know what the hell you call these things, shields, wings, shells, whatever. But it's not anime accurate, whereas this is more anime accurate. Honestly, I am confused as to the design in the sense of, I know this is taken from something else. I believe this is probably a recast of the Elin models Cassatria that you can't really get your hands on unless you're willing to drop $800 for one. And even then, since Elin has def has become completely debunked, they became mechanic core, uh, you won't be able to replace parts if said kit is missing them. By the way, the level of detail in this is actually pretty sick. I mean, yeah, it's a Chinese knockoff, but this is a really, really well-made one. Anyway, point being, this, I believe, was taken from the Elin Cassatria. There are some design flaws. Sometimes the arm doesn't work well. Uh, the paint is all right. Could be a lot better. Uh, my kit came with a weird divot in the chest. As you can see here, it's not connected like the left side is. There's like this gap there that doesn't belong. Oh, well, what can you do? But let's just admire the design, because frankly, wherever it came from, I strongly believe it was taken from Elin. It's still very nice to look at. It's a beautiful piece. It's imposing. It's large and in charge. It's bigger than any other, other 1100 scale master grades. Even Sasabi pales in comparison to the shell space that this takes up. It is absolutely, as they say in England, an absolute unit. Oh, by the way, if you're not interested in this or the Elin version, you can look up for the you can look up the Neo Grade 172nd scale Cassatria. That comes with resin parts that are actually color coordinated. You know, help you out. Uh, but that thing's an eight hundred dollars. So yeah, and you still have to paint it. Whereas to this, you take it out of the box, put on a few pieces, you're done. There's a lot of articulation here. The thrusters inside the shells move up and down I didn't wiggle them please forgive me the pistons also move I felt like there could have been more paint detail in the connection areas to the wing and the shoulders the fact that it's made of a metal composite gives it enough strength to hold up all of these heavy joints 
the little nippers, clamps, whatever you want to call the tiny arm pieces. They're cool, but they're limited in range. They can only come out, and that's about it. Also, the little hooks go up and down, but they don't close or grip anything. That kind of sucks, but you can jam the beam sabers in them, and it looks like the Cassatria's little clampers are holding them. It's, it's I don't even know what the hell you call those extended arms. There is no cockpit. Um, there's no lighting features. There's a ton of details. There's a lot of opening hatch gimmicks, but due to the design, you can't really see the open hatches. So like, it's hard to see inside of them. And then you worry about possibly breaking the plastic. Sometimes the pistons and the ankles come out of place. It sucks. And it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to pop them back into place. Some of the armor pieces come off very, very easily. But they pop back in place. It's not a major, you know, deal breaker. But it can be annoying after a while. Especially if you move this thing around too often. I find that this thing... Oh, you know what I actually love about this? The beam sabers. Look at how the light is caught inside of the beam saber. Bandai should adopt this design. Because it actually looks more alive in video than a normal beam saber from the Bandai official kit. This thing is also very heavy for what it is. But then I hear it's lighter than the Steel Legends version. So be forewarned. It's a solid piece. Personally, I find it very enjoyable, even with all the flaws and gimmicks. By the way, this is the size of the Cassatria next to a 1100 scale Master Grade 2.0 Zaku Char Custom. As you can see, it's very runt-like next to it. I mean, it is very small. This thing will have no problem sitting next to any of your UC model kits and looking out of place. Look at that. Gorgeous. It is. I love this thing. I mean, even though I would have preferred it to be the green version, because as I said before, Marina Cruz is waifu material. You could still appreciate it even in red. In fact, there are people who prefer it in red, surprisingly. It's nice. It's a it's a wonderful piece. It's a little bit on the expensive side. Uh, it's around one hundred ninety nine dollars from any third party seller. Oh, the butt flap, by the way. This thing, I don't know if it's just me, and I got like a couple bum parts for the kit. The butt flap never stays in. I put it in place, it falls back out. The connection absolutely sucks. It also opens up to reveal some details in the neo grade version which I'm not sure if the Neo Great version was the original one, that Elon stole it and recast it and turned it into a, like a normal plastic model kit, and then Steel Legends or whatever, these guys are called, Metal Club, took that and turned it into this, whatever. The butt flap on the Neo Great version is actually where the battery was hidden that was used to connect all the wires inside of the kit so you could light up the thrusters, the, the wings, the beam saber, etc. Just so you know, it's a little bit of useless trivia, and I totally forgot to open it up so you can see inside of it. You'll also notice that the leg, you'll also notice that the leg hatches are open and you can't see inside of it. That's what I was saying beforehand. It's just like some of these details, they're cool, but you can't see them due to the limitization of some designs. Here's the decals for the Cassatria. They're pretty good. Uh, I have no real complaints except that one smudged. If only I was able to get my hands in some of these, because frankly, I'm seriously considering trying to get my hands on a green one and then taking it apart fully and repainting all the plastic armor bits. But you know, I got too much on my plate anyway. I shouldn't be playing that far ahead. Some back shots of this gigantic machine. It's it's beautiful. I really like this thing. Uh, you can call it a bootleg if you want, which you, you know, in a guess in a way it is, because I don't even know who really designed it. Everybody recast everybody in China. Wait, didn't Metal Club also recast uh, Infinite Dimensions, Freedom Gundam? It then turned into a metal club, so most likely this is probably a recast of the Elan version of the Cassatria. And frankly, this may be the only way you can get your hands on one, unless you're willing to spend close to a thousand dollars to get a kit and have the ability to put it together and paint it correctly. It's just the only game in town. And that's sad, really. Oh, by the way, weapons, totally forgot. Comes with two beam sabers and 24 clear plastic things for your fin funnels to come out of with thruster effects inside, which is actually pretty cool. But if you don't have the shelf space, putting all 24 in, not the best idea. 
because there's a lot of these little suckers. I mean, it would be hyper-imposing to have this thing on it. Oh, I didn't even show you the base because if I took out the base, it would be completely out of the shot. The thing is huge. I could barely get a decent shot of this thing inside of my diorama or set, as I prefer to call it. And still, it's too big. I didn't think I'd have a problem like this until I started working on some perfect great kits. I know it's taking me forever to get to them. So now I have to buy a couple more of these walls and build it another layer up. Jesus Christ. I hate working with the cheap Chinese plastic. Oh, well, back on point. The weapons. It comes with one Gatling gun and two beam sabers. Now, if you decide that you want to step it up, you can opt for the extra Gatling guns where you get four Gatling guns plus a connector at the butt area that connects in the back. You might recognize it as the same one used for the Sazabi. All right, here's the problem. The extra Gatling gun kit for the MC Beam Gatling runs you an extra $50. Plus, if you want the metal feeder belts to go with it, which constantly sell out on the show.z store, free shout out for you guys, uh, is an extra $18. So you're looking at just shy of $70 for a little extra bling. Is it worth it? It all depends on you. Also, there's the added problem you might run into. Uh, MCJ bought this for me, so I don't have to deal with it. But when I was putting it together, I realized the connection part for the beam Gatling was supposed to be a red one, but they came from Show Z as the green versions for the normal Cassatria, which is strange that it would have the red connector for the beam guns, but then the back area is the normal Cassatria. It was an oversight, I'm sure. I didn't much feel like, you know, raising a stink over nothing, really. I mean, it's free. What type of asshat would complain about that? Actually, I could actually... I could be missing another Gatling gun now looking at the promotional photos. Oh, ain't that a bitch, huh? Oh, well, what you gonna do? Doesn't change my opinion of it. It's still a very cool piece, honestly. Would I recommend this? Yes, I would definitely recommend this to anyone who is a Cassatria fan and is sick of waiting years for Bandai to put out a master grade of this truly beautiful and imposing kit. Odds are we may never see it, or we may see it so far down the line, would you really care? We could be anywhere from 5 to 10 years off. For the time being... The Metal Club version of the Cassatria is the only way that you'll be able to get an anime accurate version of one of the best Xeon mobile suits ever designed in all of the UC era that I'm aware of. And it's a shame that it doesn't get the love it deserves from Bandai.